to a new video. I hope you're all having a great week and are ready to get creative and educational. Today we are going to be looking at building a corset. The pattern that I'm going to be following is from around 1810 to 1890s. That's the time frame that people were wearing it. And the pattern was made by the Symington Corsets Company. Now, Symington Corsets was really good at keeping record of their patterns, so all of them are online for us to use. I can link those below, as well as some videos that talk more about their history, because it's very interesting. For the fabric today, I will actually be using a tablecloth that I got secondhand, because the color is absolutely beautiful. I will also actually be using zip ties for the boning instead of metal or the more historically accurate whalebone. This is because not only are zip ties cheaper, they also don't pose the threat usually of poking through the fabric because of the sharp edges. I hope you have a good time watching this video and let's get right on into it. So this is the pattern I'll be using. I'll link it below in case you wanted to print it out for yourself. When pinning and cutting the fabric, it's crucial you do it on the straight up and down grain. This will prevent it from warping once you sew it together. I cut out two of each pattern piece. Before sewing, I pinned together all of my pieces just to make sure that they would fit. I made sure to do French seams to really reinforce them. Our next step was to cut out our boning channels. I cut out 14 to put one on each side of each seam. I made them about an inch wide and as tall as each seam with a little bit of allowance. You're going to want to sew these into little tubes. After you've spent nearly an eternity sewing little snakes, you're going to want to take a safety pin and turn them inside out so that you have little tubes. This has proven to be a harder task than I thought it would, so it split in half and the safety pin uh, ripped the fabric and it stuck inside. So we are going to sew this back up and try again. So after some troubleshooting, I realized there was no solution to my problem and I was just doing it wrong. So instead of flipping all of them inside out, I'm just going to lay the part with the raw edge against the corset so that the raw edge is hidden, like that. So, we're gonna do that instead, because that'll be a lot easier. <laughs> this is what it looks like right after sewing on the boning channels, messy edges and all. Hello! So it's been about one week since I've been working on this, just because I've been busy with other projects, but here we are, back at it again. So my next step is just going to be going along and hemming the top and back, but remember to keep the bottom open so that we can slide in whatever you're using for boning. During this time, I'm also going to cut each zip tie, which is what I'm using for boning, down to size for each channel, just so that when I put it in, it doesn't get bonked by the sewing needle. Because running over a zip tie or anything you're using for boning it will break a needle. I speak from experience. Now that the top and back are all sewed up, I'm just going to go along and make sure that all of the bottom edges are equal, and then we're going to stick in our zip ties. <laughs> lot of the sewing around the bottom by hand because it got really bulky around where the boning channels were. I finished hemming the bottom and now I'm going to hand sew my eyelets. To do my eyelets I will cut a hole about half an inch apart. I will cut even holes on each side and then I will use embroidery thread to sew around them so that they don't fray as well as to make them stronger. I ended up doing about 22 eyelets, and that took me over three hours. So now that we've sewn in and finished our eyelets, we are done. So I'm going to try and lace it up on myself, which is no easy task. And I will be back. 
I tried the corset over this dress that I made about a year ago. Since it was my first time lacing, it didn't go very well and it looked a bit misshapen. I decided to try it again over a different outfit and get a little bit more practice at lacing. So I got, let's just show you, this far into lacing myself up. It's taken me quite a while already and the string decided to break. Yay! <laughs> now I think I'm just gonna tie it in a knot just for now and to just to try to see how it looks and I will get some better ribbon later on. Not to worry, crisis averted, we got in. So this is what the front looks like right now. I'm not tight laced of course because that takes a lot of work. And this is the back. It's a little bit wider down here because my um, pattern, not great, but I figured it out. I noticed the moment I put the corset on, it felt like my posture was just immediately like my spine feels great and very supported. I see I don't tight I wouldn't tight lace it, so I have no idea how it felt like for women historically, but I really feel like this is just really secure. I don't feel any sort of pain or anything, so I think that's really nice. Things I would do differently next time I did this project would be definitely with drafting the pattern. I got the pattern off of online and I didn't print it out, I just copied down the measurements and I think that was definitely a large flaw because then I didn't get exactly all of the curves properly. I think that would have made it really give you more of that figure, that snatched waist. I totally would have also used a different type of thread to lace it up. I definitely would have used a stronger ribbon, but it had to be really long and that was all I had around the house at the time. So I would keep that in mind when you do go looking for materials. If you're looking to make it more historically accurate, I would of course use something different for the boning, such as steel or baleen. If you're still able to get that, I'm not really sure if PETA has hopped on that yet. I would also use more of a muted color because they definitely weren't using pink. I mean, they were probably using pink, but not from Value Village. You could also use different trims, such as lace, just to give it more of that pizzazz. You could also totally make it more modern by adjusting the shape if you wanted to, as well as using more of a modern fabric, such as a cotton, probably not a cotton. You could totally style it to yourself. You could not do the eyelets hand done. I just didn't have the tools available to me at the time. Overall, I really love the outcome of how it looks. I think it's just very pretty and I like how it feels on. I also thought that making it was a really fun experience and I hope that you give it a try. And if you do, you should let me know how you did and show me, that'd be really epic. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you had as good of a time as I did. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you next time.